picture a body of water suffering decades of urban abuse and neglect. Eventually, its condition becomes so foul that it's known as the most polluted lake in the nation. But what if this municipal pollution entering the lake was effectively managed, and much of the industrial waste were to fade away entirely? Would the area's residents rediscover the unique urban waterfront right at their city's doorstep and its promise of new economic and recreational activity? Hi, I'm Ron Curtis, Jr. In the months and years to come, we're going to have some important decisions to make about Onondaga Lake, decisions that will affect each of us, as well as our families and our entire community. If we ought to act wisely, we're going to need information, honest, accurate information about the lake's present condition as well as its future potential. Even today, there's confusion and misconception about this urban body of water. In fact, just mention the name Onondaga Lake to a central New Yorker, and it's anybody's guess what their response will be. It was dirty and it smelled. It doesn't smell as bad as it used to. <laughs> I guess. It's, it's great for bike riding and cooking out, hanging out, and sports, and anything. I wouldn't advise anyone to go out there. It's not worth it. It's polluted. It's been polluted for many, many years. It's going to remain polluted for many years. I'm sure it's better than it was. Can you imagine how, how nice the city would be if that lake was still clean and people could still swim in it and, and boat and fish? It would, be, it would be great. It would be really nice. Which of these images then fits the real picture of the lake today? Is it nothing more than a toxic cesspool? Or has it already begun to regain its former sparkle as the jewel of central New York? Most importantly, how do we as citizens add our ideas and input to the process of creating a new vision for Onondaga Lake? These are some of the questions we'll be looking at and begin to answer. Along the way, you'll have a chance to check your own knowledge of the lake with a series of questions about its past, its present, and its future use. The lake has played a vital role in the growth and prosperity of central New York, and it will continue to have a far-reaching impact on our community. By glancing back at where we've been, we may gain insight into what the future holds for the lake. Let's start by asking our first question and see how some people who visited the lake answered it. For hundreds of years, members of the Iroquois Nation came to Onondaga Lake to A, gather salt, B, fish and hunt for food, C, celebrate water festivals. It's B, they had plenty of game around here at one time and the water was before the 1900s and 1800s, it was pure. There's plenty of fish in here. <laughs> celebrate water festivals. I probably think that it has to be uh, salt, because the salt mines, the salt factory, and everybody else was attracted to this area at that time. If the year is 1700 and you were a member of the Iroquois Nation, you see these waters as a source of food. You fish and hunt along its shores for trout, salmon, perch, and deer. The Iroquois believe that humans cannot control, but only share the land with animals and plants. For ages, no human activity disrupts the bounty of wildlife to be found here. If it's shortly after the American Revolution, and you're among the area's first settlers, then you see something else as you gaze upon the lake. You view it as a source of a precious commodity, brine. And out of a swampy bog grows the nation's first salt-boiling industry. As early as 1793, Onondaga Lake is serving the emerging economic forces of the Industrial Revolution. As the economy and population of central New York expands, new demands and pressures are put on the natural character of Onondaga Lake, causing beneficial as well as negative impacts. In 1822, the Erie Canal is opened, and swamps surrounding the lake are drained. As a result, the danger of malaria ends, salt is transported more efficiently to distant markets, and a frontier town called Corinth begins to grow into a city called Syracuse. But in the process of draining the swamps, the lake loses 20% of its surface area, and much of its diverse plant and animal life begin to disappear. By 1872, as an entrepreneur, you would envision new uses for Onondaga Lake, and a golden age begins. For the price of a nickel, city residents ride trolleys to the Iron Pier, and its dance hall, merry-go-round, and water toboggan chute. Steamboats deliver their passengers to resorts and beaches as they chug along the lake. Names like Rockaway Beach, Maple Bay, Long Branch Beach, and White City become synonymous with hotels, yacht clubs, amusement rides, dancing, and dining. Onondaga Lake Whitefish is savored as a culinary delicacy. 
In winter, the lake is crowded with ice skaters and ice boaters. From the late 1800s on, the story of Onondaga Lake is written by the captains of local industry. They see the lake as a receptacle for the area's industrial waste. In 1884, Salve Process Company, later known as Allied Chemical, begins producing soda ash, a material needed in the production of glass. For a century, the company provides jobs for many and enormous wealth for some. But its most profound and lasting effect would be upon Onondaga Lake. By 1890, other major industries, such as machinery, steel, and pottery production, joined Salve Process in sending their wastes into Onondaga Lake. Soon, the popular Onondaga whitefish will disappear from these waters and no longer grace the menus of posh New York City restaurants. The year 1896 brings sewers to the city of Syracuse, and the stage is set for one of the major causes of pollution in Onondaga Lake. The sewers transport untreated sewage and stormwater directly to Onondaga Creek and Harbor Brook, two tributaries of Onondaga Lake which run through the city. In the early 1920s, two intercepting sewers are constructed, which discharge untreated sewage directly to the lake. To prevent sewers from backing up during wet weather, overflow pipes are installed at various points along the streams. Even today during rainstorms, when the capacity of the sewers is exceeded, a combination of untreated raw sewage and storm water is discharged directly to the streams, leading to the lake. By 1925, the city's first primary sewage treatment plant is operational, discharging effluent to Onondaga Lake and sludge to Salve waste beds. However, it can handle only dry weather sewage flows and very limited amounts of stormwater runoff. By the 20s, the lake is no longer fit for most of its former recreational uses, but some encouraging projects continue to occur amidst the continuing municipal and industrial abuse of Onondaga Lake. During the 1930s, the East Shore Park is built, eliminating an industrial slum area of abandoned salt production facilities. In 1960, Onondaga County establishes the Metropolitan Sewer District and builds a new primary treatment plant serving the city and some suburban areas. In the 1970s, the community's view of Onondaga Lake changes again, and for the first time in decades, a brighter future for Onondaga Lake is envisioned. Work has begun on a lakeshore trail system, phosphates are banned from detergents, and the Metro Sewage Plant improves its operation by providing additional phosphate removal treatment to municipal wastewater. In 1986, Allied Chemical ceases operations while other industries improve their waste treatment facilities. Onondaga County shows its commitment to the lake by making multi-million dollar upgrades to its municipal waste treatment system in 1987, improving the combined sewer system's carrying capacity, reducing sewer overflows into Onondaga Lake by 90 percent. The private sector adds momentum to these efforts with commercial development and rehabilitation rising on nearby areas once dominated by oil tanks, industrial sites, and state transportation facilities. And each year, over a half million of us rediscover the recreational and commercial potential of Onondaga Lake by visiting its growing park system and attending cultural and sporting events along its shores. It seems history is telling us how we see the lake affects our use of the land around its waters. And in turn, these land uses impact the quality of the water. That's why we need a reliable and accurate idea of the lake's present condition as we make future land use decisions. That brings us to our next question. Onondaga Lake has suffered years of municipal and industrial pollution. As a result, Onondaga is a dead lake, supporting little if any plant or animal life. True or false? True. True. It's been ruined, you know, throughout the years. I believe that to be false. There are plenty of fish in there. It's just uh, we're advised not to eat those fish. When it comes to Onondaga Lake, it's sometimes difficult to know what to believe and who to trust. So who then can we turn to for some straight answers? You don't have to be an expert to uh, see that the lake is uh, cleaner and clearer than it was. And uh, you don't have to be an expert to know that the lake doesn't smell like it used to. Almost anyone familiar with the questions involving the lake respects the expert opinion of this man, Bob Hennigan, 
head of the Environmental Studies Department at the SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry, and the chairman of the Onondaga Lake Advisory Committee. Uh, Bob, what's the actual condition of the lake? Uh, is it a dead lake, or is it really improving? It's far from being a dead lake. Some 30 species of fish are found in this lake, and uh, uh, we wouldn't see all the birds that we see if it was a dead lake. Uh, this lake has greatly improved. Oh, well, at the risk of oversimplifying things, you can identify as A, B, C. A for algae, a B for bacteria, and C for chemicals. And you have to remember that uh, these materials interact with one another uh, in the water and can affect uh, uses such as uh, fishing and swimming. Okay, how about algae? Well, most people know that algae is a uh, plant material that you uh, see floating on the top of ponds and lakes. Uh, this is uh, actually needed by other aquatic life. However, if you get too much of this stuff, uh, you uh, can end up with two other problems. First, it decreases the transparency of the water, and that's a hazard for swimming. A lifeguard must be able to see uh, if someone is in trouble below the surface of the water. State regulations require that the uh, water be transparent to a depth of four feet. Uh, you can usually obtain that in the lake at, at this time. Uh, however, we do have some days in which you can see through 20 feet of lake water. Uh, you have to keep in mind that it wasn't very long ago that the farthest we could see in the lake was just a few inches. I'd say that uh, that's a major improvement. And what's the second problem with algae? As part of the natural process, uh, algae consume oxygen as well as producing it. However, when you get an overabundance of, of algae, uh, it uh, falls to the bottom of the lake, uh, decomposes, and in the process consumes uh, tremendous amounts of oxygen. Uh, fish need that dissolved oxygen to survive. And as that dissolved oxygen goes down, the number and variety of fish decreases. And uh, therefore, uh, the fish can only live in those top, uh, top waters that contain the oxygen. Major reductions of algae in the lake were achieved, however, when detergents containing uh, phosphates were banned in 1972. Also, these algal reductions continued when phosphorus removing measures began at the Metro Plan in 1987 with upgrades in 1989 and 1990. As a result, these declining algal levels continue to this day. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, algal reduction uh, is the area where the lake has made its greatest recovery. Well, that's good news, but what about the bacteria from sewage? Now, isn't that harmful? Well, within the intestinal tract of mammals, you'll find a fecal coliform organism. And when this uh, bacteria shows up in uh, lake waters, it's an indication of sewage contamination. At present, uh, the fecal coliform bacteria entering the lake make the uh, the waters are like unhealthy for swimming. However, after a few days of dry weather, the lake will usually meet the state standard for contact recreation, the Class B standard. But it's a different story after it rains because our sewage combines with the runoff from city streets. This combined flow frequently exceeds the capacity of the intercepting sewers along Onondaga Creek and Harbor Brook. So the stormwater and untreated wastewater spill into the streams and then to the lake shooting the bacteria level way up. Uh, since the 1970s, uh, significant improvements have been made to the county uh, combined sewer system, uh, thereby reducing the overflows into the lake by some 90%. And upgrades to the system are continuing at the Lake Creek and Liverpool pumping stations. As a result, the bacteria levels in the lake are dropping. But a wide range of industrial waste and chemicals have had a major influence on Onondaga Lake. That's right, and they uh, continue to have a major impact, especially on the ability of the lake to support a fishery and the ability uh, for us to be able to eat the fish. One industrial waste that generates the most public concern is mercury, a heavy metal. It is estimated that before closing in 1986, Allied disposed of over 34,000 pounds of mercury in Onondaga Lake. Since the plant closed, the level of mercury in the fish has been fluctuating from year to year. Nobody is sure why this is, but it's a good reason for continued testing. Also, the mercury-contaminated sediments at the bottom of the lake are listed on the state's registry of inactive hazardous waste sites. And the state health department has, of course, advised against eating the fish, 
although catch and release fishing is permitted. Well, Bob, we talked about algae, bacteria, and chemicals. Now, is there anything else that will affect the water quality and the future development of the lake? Uh, those are basically the major causes and impact. But we should be aware of the sediment that enters the lake from Onondaga Creek due to the mud boils in the Tully Valley and the adverse impact they have on fish habitat. Also, so-called non-point sources of pollution, such as pesticides and fertilizers from agricultural activities, are a concern. But there are ways and technologies to alleviate this type of problem. But the greatest problem of all may be getting people to realize that the lake is improving, in some instances dramatically. And with these improvements come the option of choosing what kind of future we want for Onondaga Lake. For decades now, we've turned our back on Onondaga Lake, ashamed of its reputation as the dirtiest body of water in the country. Now that it's beginning to make a comeback, what are some of the ways this cause of collective shame is being transformed into a source of community pride? And what other options exist for the future? Before we answer that, let's ask our next question, which is crucial to the future lake development. The shoreline surrounding Onondaga Lake is almost entirely owned by A, Onondaga County, B, various local municipalities such as Syracuse and Liverpool, C, private owners such as industries and homeowners, or D, a combination of all of the above. I would say D, a combination of all of the above. Mostly industry. I would think most my guess would be industry or you know, businesses would own more of it than anybody else. I'd say most of it from Onondaga County. Um, I mean, they maintain just about the whole thing. The road to the future on Onondaga Lake is paved with two vital elements, cooperation and dedication. Who are these groups and individuals committed to and working for the lake's future? Well, they represent a wide range of perspectives, business, government, concerned citizens. Let's get to know some of them. Gary McLaughlin is the commissioner of Onondaga County Parks. Gary, who actually owns the land around the lake, and uh, how does that affect future use and development? Well, most fortunately, Ron, I think the county can be described as the landlord of the lake. Uh, county Parks basically has acquired about 1,100 acres of shoreline around the lake which interprets into about 90 to 95 percent of the land on the shoreline. In your view, what's the major focus for public use of the lake in the years to come? I suspect there's support for things like a performing arts center, and improved marina facilities, and a restaurant, and even the aquarium's ideas that have been surfaced. We'll all be met with, with a lot of positive, if we can afford it, and, and, and if it's done right, let's do it, kind of an attitude. What are some of those plans to extend the lake's park system? Well, certainly our most uh, priority plan is the completion of the bike trail around the lake. Presently, we are about halfway around the lake with a five-mile horseshoe around the east shore and west shore. We need to complete that circuit, which would ultimately result in a 12-mile loop around Onondaga Lake, which would become then the hub of a recreational trail network that could go out east, west, north, and south. Sue Hopkins is director of Syracuse's Office for Waterfront Redevelopment. Why is the uh, development of the Inner Harbor so important? Well, as I said, you know, we have this wonderful lake, this potentially wonderful lake, and uh, it seems such a waste to have all of this hundreds of acres sit there uh, as an industrial wasteland, essentially. Susan says that the city's master plan for redeveloping the Inner Harbor calls for housing units, public parks, restaurants, a new marina, and a skating rink. Also envisioned is an amphitheater, as well as areas for light industrial use and office space. And now we are in the process of uh, putting together uh, a community of people to develop design guidelines uh, for the implementation of the master plan. For example, um, we have four housing developers who are interested in building three to six hundred units of rental housing. But we want to impose design guidelines on them so that we don't have Walt Disney type castles going up someplace. Leif Lockie is a regional water engineer for the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. In light of all these changes, what's your assessment for the future of Onondaga Lake? It may very well not be possible to recover it to a pristine condition. Uh, the research efforts presently ongoing will tell us how, how good it can become. And, and after those are done, it's going to be a matter of money implementing remedial measures. 
But on the whole, I'm very uh, positive about the future of Onondaga Lake. I think it can be turned into a, a terrific recreational resource for the, for the city and the county. Erwin Schultz is president of the Syracuse Chamber of Commerce. Irv, what's your vision for the future of Onondaga Lake? Uh, I see it as a great tourist attraction. It will not uh, have a lot of residential around it, I don't think, uh, in terms of uh, single-family houses, but it will certainly be an attraction for multi-family uh, uh, apartment houses and so on. But it's, uh, it's, it empties into the Barge Canal, which is going to be a great uh, attraction for more boating than and, uh, there is right now. So I think it's just going to be a great, great future for this, uh, uh, depending upon how fast they can clean it up and uh, what kind of development is going to happen. To this point, we've learned that transportation, recreation, and industry have all played a part in Onondaga Lake's past. We've learned from Bob Hennigan that the lake is not dead, but in fact, finally making some real improvement. We've explored potential scenarios of future lake development. So then, how can we start enjoying a cleaner future on Onondaga Lake? Here's our final question. In order for Onondaga Lake to one day fully serve as a recreational resource, which of the following is necessary? A. Cooperation between government agencies and private groups. B. Improved water quality. C. Citizen participation. Or D. All of the above. All of the above, I would say. And it looks like that's beginning to happen now. The, the citizenry around here need to participate in it also. The industries around here also need to cooperate in it. So if everybody can join forces in uh, putting up a joint project to have the lake clean for a better recreational purpose, I think that would be the right answer all of the above. Julia Portmore is executive director of the American Clean Water Project and an active member of the local Sierra Club. Do you think the public has a role in helping improve the lake, and if so, how? Oh, certainly they do, because the public will influence the legis legislators, members of our common council, our county legislator, legislature, if they tell their elected officials that they want the lake cleaned up, and they tell them at the, at the voting booth as well as directly, I'm certain we will have the push that we need you know, to have a clean lake. Now, do you think the public's ready to rethink their view of the lake? And I think potential? they've been ready a long time ago. Yeah. Francis Petro is president of Crucible Specialty Metals. What do you think the public's expectations of industry should be as the lake is redeveloped for recreational uses? Well, I think their expectation of us should be that uh, we behave as, uh, as responsible citizens and, and, uh, and they have every right to expect that and, as a matter of fact, they have every right to demand that. Uh, and certainly we're oriented that way and I think, uh, to my knowledge, all the other industry that's uh, impacted the lake or uh, has had anything to do with it is trying to do that or is doing it. Paul Dolan is a member of the Onondaga Lake Advisory Committee. What groups are presently involved in trying to restore the lake? Uh, we have a number of civic organizations. Uh, the Isaac Walton League is a, a sportsman's club that's dedicated to fishing. We have the Friends of Historic Onondaga Lake, uh, who are a civic group uh, whose sole purpose is to help with the lake. Uh, we have the local municipalities, that is the village of Liverpool, town of Salina, town of Geddes, all of these governments uh, have been involved in, for years in different projects to help clean up the lake. Uh, the uh, last, but certainly not the least by any means, is the Onondaga County Parks and Recreation Department. They operate this park that we are located in. It is the most used park in Onondaga County. And they, they on a, almost on a daily basis, are involved in programs that impact on the use of this park and therefore the use of the lake. Any thoughts on where the funds are going to come from to make this happen? Certainly the federal and state governments have already expressed their willingness to expend funds on the variety of projects that have been undertaken within the last five or ten years having to do with improving the sewage treatment facilities around the lake and uh, having to do with uh, water quality. Uh, in addition, the city and the county governments have shown their willingness to expend public funds. I think that uh, the public private sector has also stepped in uh, with developers and projects around the lake and the things that they must do which obviously enhance their own private development but as a secondary and I feel much more important 
benefit the enhance the value of the lake too and, and go towards uh, solving some of these problems that have been created over all these years. What do you think the individual citizen can do to help in the effort to revitalize this lake? The most important thing is to become knowledgeable about the lake. Just exactly what is its state now and how did it get that way? What can be done in the future? Learn about the technology that, that exists now. Learn about the variety of measures that can be taken to help solve these pollution problems. And then when the county legislature and the city legislature is discussing uh, expending funds, uh, be supportive of those measures. It, it will cost money, that's true. But if all of us are willing to contribute, all of us are willing to request that our legislatures uh, get behind the movement to clean the lake, it can be cleaned. Everyone agrees a cleaner future on Onondaga Lake begins with three essential steps. And the first two are well underway. Cooperation between local government and private industry. And second, continued improvement of the lake's water quality. The third step, citizen involvement, is where you come in. If you haven't been here recently, then visit the lake. Stay aware of its true present condition and future potential. And tell your elected officials about your own vision and hopes for Onondaga Lake. Now, more than ever, it's up to us to play our part if we want to help restore the sparkle to this jewel of central New York.